Up next, lightning danger. Another bolt strikes at Columbia home tonight. If you think there's a lot of lightning in Columbia, you're right. Gamecock football in trouble with the NCAA. Violations, 10 of them. What USC is proposing is punishment and why they, that may not be enough. And when will the discovery take off and will you be able to find Harry Potter's latest book in Columbia? Nightcast starts right now. Live from Columbia, the station you count on for local news. This is WIS News 10 Nightcast. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Nightcast. I'm Craig Melvin. Hi, I'm Dawn D. Mercer. South Carolina, of course, is rich in history, but when it comes to race relations, some of that history is shameful. At a church in Abbeville, hundreds of people tried to move beyond the racial violence of the past. News 10's Jack Kinsey says, for one man, the gathering brought back painful memories. He lives in Philadelphia now, but Eugene Crawford can never forget growing up in Abbeville County. A place where whites would spit on a black teenager just for walking down the street. Nothing you can do to wipe it off. Mother prayed for it, but we made it through, you know. Crawford's grandfather did not make it through. In 1916, a white lynch mob attacked and murdered Anthony Crawford. The killing shattered his family. But Tuesday night, Eugene Crawford was back in Abbeville, one of the 300 blacks and whites filling the pews at Friendship Worship Center, here for an emotional service that would allow civic leaders to apologize for the racial violence of years past. I want Abbeville to be remembered not for its violence, not for That's right. the things that's taken place in the past, the wars and such as this, but I want it to be remembered as a place of peace. Yes. I am here tonight because the story, the whole truthful, painful, ambiguous story must be told and confessed and ultimately forgiven. The Bible says you can tell that they are Christians by their love. And so how can we uh, be Christians and if someone come to us and apologize and not receive it. Amen. Apology accepted. We forgive you for all the churches that were burned and all the mobs that raped our women, all the mobs that burn our churches. I'm a former descendant of slaves and I say to you today in the name of the Lord, we forgive you. I feel better. I feel like I can fly if I had some wing. But I've been mistreated here in this time when I was a young man. And what now? Well, some here say they would like to see a similar apology from the state of South Carolina. If it happens, the state would have a hard time duplicating the brotherhood created in Abbeville County. In Abbeville, Jack Inzi, WIS News 10. And that service was actually a result of a month ago today, the U.S. Senate apologized for not passing any sort of significant anti-lynching legislation more than a century ago. So that came about about a month ago. And Jack says it's very powerful down there. Yeah, Jack has covered, I mean, numerous stories yeah. over the years for several years. And his reporters were supposed to go and be objective and not, you know, get emotionally involved. And he said, you can't help in this kind of a service sure. and time not to be touched through sure. it. So I know he enjoyed that as well. All right, looking at some of these afternoon storms, they have caused some minor damage around the Midlands today. In fact, in Gaston, the winds knocked over this chicken coop. There was even a tornado reported in Sumter County. For your first forecast, we're going to find out what's going on here. Plus, there's news of a hurricane. Here's Ben Tanner. Yeah, the atmosphere was really kind of worked over today with torrential rain affecting a good portion of the Midlands. Tonight, the, uh, the showers have ended. There is a little bit of drizzle falling and some light rain back through Georgia, crossing through Barnwell. Allendale and Bamberg counties. To the north of there, we have additional showers from Anderson crossing into Abbeville, McCormick. These are all moving east at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. Not real rapid movement, but from west to east. And rain totals from today, heavy rain, bright shades of green here in Aiken County, southern Lexington, parts of uh, Calhoun County. That's where uh, south of I-20, the heaviest rain seems or appears to have fallen according to our Doppler estimates. Here's the radar display tonight. Look along the coast. Severe weather 
in effect, uh, well, we've had warnings from near Charleston all the way down to Savannah, reports of uh, wind gusts uh, near the Tybee Island Lighthouse, of all places, of up to 50 miles per hour. These are rain totals. Robin Smith, about uh, almost six-tenths of an inch in Gilbert. Rose to Stokus, just shy of a half an inch in Turbyville, and C.A. Douglas, just four hundredths, with a half an inch on the nose at Columbia Metropolitan Airport. And as Don D. and Craig mentioned, a uh, tornado reported this afternoon briefly in Sumter County, Manchester State Forest. High winds peak Jenkinsville up in Fairfield County and down in St. Matthews with hail eight miles southeast of Lancaster and more hail reported over in Gaston. Meanwhile, we look outside at 72. The temperatures have been steady since about 4 o'clock as the rain started, and we have low 70s from Greenville, where it's 73, to Orangeburg, all the way up to Florence and Darlington. And again, Dennis being the main instigator up to the north, and the flow around Dennis is what has uh, developed the storms as far south as the Deep South, including South Carolina, Mississippi, and Georgia. The big information tonight on... Emily was a tropical storm, has since been upgraded. Actually, we need to mark that off and make it 11 p.m. with winds up to 90 miles per hour and headed toward the Yucatan Peninsula. 72 is the forecast low tonight with skies becoming partly cloudy late and then some fog developing. 90 tomorrow with showers and storms likely. Rain chances going down in the five-day outlook, and I'll have more on that coming up. Dawn DeCray. Thank you, Ben. During the summer months, we see plenty of pop-up storms, and with those comes lightning. Its latest target, a Columbia home this afternoon. Angie Golf is downtown Columbia with more on the need to keep an eye and ear to the sky. Angie? Well, Dondi, lightning is the nation's number two storm killer next to flash floods. Now, Florida has the highest number of strikes per year, but South Carolina is not far behind. And weather experts say lightning is no matter to be taken lightly. It's a serious threat that can strike even the most prepared. Meteorologists can see bad weather coming, but that doesn't mean they can hide from it. You could hear thunder in the distance, and all of a sudden a big stroke of lightning came down. Bernie Palmer of the National Weather Service remembers when lightning hit his home as a child. It knocked my mother down. Luckily she wasn't injured, but that just goes to show that, you know, lightning can strike when you least expect it. And can be deadly. Lightning kills about 100 people every year and injures more than 300. Sort of the, uh, the weather killer that doesn't get uh, the attention that it deserves because they occur usually in single instances as opposed to group uh, tragedies with hurricanes and tornadoes. Strikes are more common than you think. Columbia has seen its share of shock this year. Earlier today, lightning is believed to have caused a house fire on Kettering Drive near Irmo. Last month, flames gutted the top floor of this Brook Pines apartment building. A bolt struck a tree, the tree caught fire, then fell onto the building. And a couple months earlier, a lightning strike forced more than 100 senior citizens from their nursing home. In all three incidents, no one was hurt. But with lightning season in full flash till September, remember this, most bolts hit 10 miles or more away from where a storm is. In my personal experience, that was the case. You know, most of the rain had already left, and we had the, the great lightning storm there. So people should be aware of that, that it doesn't have to be raining to have a lightning hazard. Other things to keep in mind, well, for starters, when there's thunderstorms outside in the air, where I'm at is not the place to be, which is outside. Fully enclosed large buildings are best for lightning protection and also avoid elevated places like trees and poles and try to follow what's called the 30-30 rule. If there's 30 seconds or less between lightning and thunder, that means lightning is near and you need to get inside. Those are just some lightning tips that can be life savers. Live in Columbia, Angie Goff, WIS News 10. All right. Harsh news tonight for the Gamecock football program. A new report out today spelling out 10 violations, five of them major, and all of them falling under the watch of former head coach Lou Holtz. Mark Quinn tonight with what it all means for Gamecock Nation. The NCAA claims the USC's back-to-back -back bowl seasons were marred by a, quote, lack of institutional control. Ten infractions were forwarded to new athletic director Eric Hyman today, who quickly and forcefully Claim these transgressions were inflicted by the previous staff, headed up by Holtz. And it's a new beginning. And you have some different people in place that uh, have a different set of values. 
So as we began to look forward in the future, uh, yes, there were mistakes that were mistakes made, but the people that made the mistakes, the staff that made the mistakes, are uh, the administra the coaches are no longer here. The violations range from providing free tutoring lessons to two players who weren't even students yet, to holding summer workouts who were made to sound mandatory when in fact they were not. As a result, USC has forwarded a list of potential punishment options, including probation for the next two seasons, the loss of two scholarships in each of the next two years, and a reduction in the number of on-campus visits taken by recruits. It's the cards we've been dealt, and now we have to play with them, and, and it's unfortunate, but, but Coach Spurrier is, is such a winner. And, uh, you know, he's been such a wonderful role model that this is something that will be overcome. Dealing with the aftermath is Steve Spurrier, wholly supportive through this statement today, saying in part that he hopes the NCAA will agree to the penalties, which he believes are fair. So they might get this matter behind them. Included in today's report, comments and statements from current and former university officials from the president all the way down to trustees. One name missing, Lou Holtz. Attempts to reach him down at his home in Orlando have been so far unsuccessful. In the newsroom, Mark Quinn, WIS News 10 Sports. A man investigators consider a person of interest in a Gaston murder will be brought back to the Midlands tomorrow. Samuel Loft disappeared before a judge this morning during a hearing in Knoxville, Tennessee, where he was captured earlier this week. Right now, he is only charged with violating his probation on kidnapping and burglary charges. He has not been charged in the murder of Diana Wilma. British investigators now say they believe the mastermind behind last week's terror attack is likely still on the loose. Investigators are going through evidence at the homes of the suspected bombers and closed-circuit TV footage. Forensic experts are expected to be back at those homes tomorrow. At least 52 people were killed last week in London after four men blew themselves up on three subway cars and a bus. The Reverend Billy Graham says he will not accept London's invitation to preach a crusade there. Today, citing his advancing age and poor health, the world-famous evangelist said last month's three-day revival in New York will be his last. Supreme Court Chief Justice William Rehnquist is in the hospital again tonight. He was taken to a Washington, D.C. area hospital with a high fever. The 80-year-old justice has thyroid cancer and has been undergoing radiation and chemotherapy. Today's hospitalization further speculation that he will announce his retirement before the high court reconvenes in the fall. The space shuttle Discovery is sitting on the launch pad tonight and will stay there at least a few more days. Jay Gray tonight on why today's launch was scrubbed. The day began with such promise. Rain clouds cleared over pad 39B and the crew of Discovery was ready, even excited about a return to flight. But at 1.32 p.m., just over two hours from the scheduled launch, things changed dramatically. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Engineers in launch control spotted a problem. One of the four engine cutoff sensors inside the bottom of the external fuel tank first delivered faulty readings, then failed completely. So when one of those uh, indicators started acting up today, um, we decided it was time to quit. This is not the first time there have been issues with the fuel gauge. Crews faced the same situation during fuel tank testing in April. They never determined the cause of the problem then and still aren't sure why the gauge failed before today's scheduled launch. It, it appears to be an open circuit, but uh, again, I'm postulating at this point until we collect more data. It's an intermittent. It's so far an unexplained anomaly. When we can explain it, we will. Though it's still not clear how long that could take. An investigative team will empty the fuel tank and try to figure out what's causing the sensor malfunction. If there's no quick fix, Discovery will be pulled from the pad and the launch could be postponed until September. We should have a better idea of the extent of the problems and how long repairs might take after the Discovery Mission Management Team meets tomorrow at noon. Jay Gray, NBC News, Kennedy Space Center. And next at 11, a huge fire in North Carolina. A plant that once put hundreds to work goes up in flames. Plus, Pottermania, the Boy Wizard's newest book, is shattering sales records. You're watching WIS News 10 Nightcast with Don D. Mercer, Craig Melvin, Storm Team Meteorologist Ben Tanner, and Rick Henry Sports. Count on WIS News 10. 
Join us tomorrow morning for Sunrise. We'll play golf with Lucas McFadden. Ooh, sounds good. We'll check on your weekend forecast in the tropics on Sunrise. Why is my dick... Huge flames this morning as the vacant North Carolina textile plant catches fire. The Canapolis plant was closed two years ago by the Pillotex company. The plant was scheduled to be demolished, so firemen did not take any risks trying to put it out. But they did make sure the flames did not spread beyond that building. Sales of the new Harry Potter book have been magical so far. It has broken online sales records with 1.4 million orders on Amazon.com, making it the best new release product ever sold on the website. Here in Columbia, bookstores like the Happy Bookseller on Forest Drive are getting ready for big crowds when the book comes out late Friday night. People at the store say there is a lot of secrecy around Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Um, when the books arrive, we are not allowed to open the, even open the boxes for fear that a bookseller or anyone might read the content and leak out what might happen in the next Harry Potter. The books go on sale at midnight Friday night slash Saturday morning. The Happy Bookseller on Forest Drive in Columbia is inviting fans to come by at 9.30 for a costume party and games. The Books A Million on Harbison will hold a costume contest a half an hour earlier. That would be starting at 9. For more Potter Mania, go to WISTV.com. Harry Potter, not the only series rising in popularity with young adults. Books with adult themes like sex, drugs, and alcohol are becoming bestsellers for teenagers. Tomorrow on Nightcast, Angie Gall shows some of the sexier stories hitting the shelves and why parents should know what their kids are reading. Should be a very interesting mm -hmm. report tomorrow. We saw some pretty heavy rain in parts of the Midlands today. We've got some more chances for showers tomorrow. Ben's got your forecast up next. And we have a wind outlook right now. We'll be right back from the commercial with the weekend forecast. Stay with us. We are going to take a look at radar. There's rain out there. Here's Ben. Seems to be the place to start. You're right, Donnie. We put this uh, into motion, and the showers that have come out of Georgia have since weakened considerably, and we're left with some patchy, light drizzle. And Dennis is still a player. Still a player on our map tonight, and the reason is because Dennis is situated right there in the circulation around. You have to look carefully at night because most of the convection has died down. But in any event, continuing to find these spiraling bands around the storm as it's just been positioned right over Kentucky and Tennessee for about the last three to four days after moving inland over this past weekend. It is a fairly nice evening, in my opinion, 72 degrees, the dew point 70. We have 94% humidity, the wind's calm. Watch out the fog tomorrow morning, and we're ready this weekend. Up in uh, Chesterfield County, they're having the Watermelon Festival. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Pageland, the Watermelon Parade and the live music and entertainment all weekend long with temperatures in the 90s. And I just called up to my buddy Rick Henry. I think it was a little late, but I think I'm certain that the Peach Festival is this weekend. What I'm not certain about if it is if it's Saturday and Sunday or just Saturday, but the consensus is they will be eating a lot of peaches up in uh, parts of Chesterfield County this weekend. Uh, 70s tonight, 72 in Rock Hill, Greenwood 71, Columbia 72, and we have 73s rounding the corner from Aiken to Darlington. And yes, Emily has decided I'm going to strengthen to a hurricane. It happened within the last three hours. The winds are up to 92 miles per hour. Right there over the Windward Islands, way down south in the Atlantic Basin. And if we follow the track of Emily over the next couple of days, watch this. Heads through the Caribbean, emerges over the Yucatan Monday. 8 p.m. and then into the Gulf of Mexico. Beyond that, it looks like we might have a second landfalling hurricane somewhere in northern Mexico or south Texas. Meanwhile, back at home, Dennis is still a player for us with scattered showers and storms around that area of low pressure. Tonight, 72 with light showers and fog, then partly cloudy. 69 in Greenville, 75 in Charleston. Tomorrow, partly to mostly cloudy. It'll be in the low 90s. And then the showers will build in late morning into the afternoon. Didn't take long today. We got up to 92 degrees in about, uh, well, six hours' time after the sun made it up over the horizon. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Temperatures up into the mid-90s. Heat index of 105 this weekend. Stay hydrated. Morning readings in the mid-70s. Rain chances going down to 40% Friday, 
30% Saturday and Sunday. Monday, 20%. Emily, rapid intensification in the last three hours. Okay, we'll be watching that. Thank you, Ben. Mm -hmm. Still to come on Nightcast, Michelle Wee has a close call at the Public Links Tournament. And some costume characters take the road at the Tour de France. Sports is next. We're back in two. We're here on location in Bishopville, right South Carolina with the lottery's newest commercial lottery, production. Scene one, take 12. Action! This is it, our big break, follow me. Get the control room, we're going live. Play Palmetto Cash 5 and expect the unexpected. At most restaurants, shrimp comes with a lemon wedge. At Ruby Tuesday, it comes with a half pound of beef. The new Surf and Turf Burger, one of 30 famous burgers. Only at Ruby Tuesday, so good, it's guaranteed. At Ruby Tuesday, we've got a burger that comes from the sea, but tastes like it came from heaven. The Jimmy Jack's Crab Cake Burger, one of 30 famous burgers. Only at Ruby Tuesday. So good, it's guaranteed. Do you know this symbol? That's right, recycling. Who should recycle? Consumers, of course. But don't forget business and industry. From paper to pallets to plastic, from cardboard to cans to computers and more, your office or plant is critical to recycling efforts. That's why South Carolina offers BRAP, the Business Recycling Assistance Program. Working with BRAP, business and industry can learn how to reduce waste and save money. Make sure your workplace recycles. Contact BRAP today. Companion Healthcare is changing its name to Blue Choice Health Plan. A new name that better says exactly who we are. We still offer the same award-winning programs and plans that add up to greater security for you and your family. And you'll still get the same high level of customer service you've grown to expect from us. Blue Choice Health Plan. Nothing's changed but our name. We're still South Carolina's health plan. More bad news for Gamecock football. Uh, yeah, you know, a lot of people out there can't wait until the season starts, yeah. and then we can just talk about football. Mm -hmm. The Steve Spurrier era at South Carolina will probably begin under a cloud of probation. USC is proposing to the NCAA that the football program be placed on two years probation for transgressions committed under former coach Lou Holtz. The university released a list of the violations today, 10 in all, five of them considered major. They include providing tutoring for players not officially enrolled in school, the reinstatement of a player who was still on academic suspension. Also, some players thought off-season workouts were mandatory when they were not. The report also indicates that USC displayed a lack of control and monitoring of its program for NCAA rules violations. Now, here are the self-imposed penalties that USC is proposing. A two-year probationary period, a reduction in the number of paid recruiting visits from 56 to 50 in each of the next two years, and a loss of two scholarships in both 2006 and 2007. There are some steps that we'll take internally within the athletic department to ensure that the university continues to have confidence in us, in us and, and the, the South Carolina family, the University of South Carolina family has confidence in us. And this is something that has been unfortunate. It's taken place. Uh, we're going to learn from it, and then we're going to move forward. The NCAA's Committee on Infractions will meet in mid-August. They can either accept USC's self-imposed penalties or hand out tougher sanctions. It was the equivalent of a buzzer beater for Michelle Wee. Wee advances in the amateur public links tournament thanks to a fantastic finish. Now this is Wee taking on Will Claxton today in match play. Wee sinks a 15-foot birdie putt on the final hole to beat Claxton one up. This 15-year-old high school junior is the first woman to qualify for this tournament. It was very tough out there today. I mean, he's a very good match with player. He's a very good player. And, you know, it's very tough for me. And I, I, it feels good because I grind until the end. Things are getting a little weird at the Tour de France. A jolly green devil shows for today's 11th stage. Here's another guy with horns. Texas Longhorns, in honor of Lance Armstrong, the Texan remains the overall leader. He finishes sixth today. He's right there in the middle of the pack. 
and holds on to the yellow jersey with an advantage of 38 seconds. I want to go back to the USC football story. Does probation mean that, well, first of all, what does it mean, and does that include being excluded from bowl games? Definitely. Okay, we have to wait until the NCAA makes its ruling. The okay. infractions committee will meet in mid-August. They can either accept the self-imposed penalties by USC, and, you know, that doesn't include um, no bowls, but the, uh, the NCAA may say, wait a minute, we need to be a little tougher on you folks. And then, yes, they could say no bowl trips. So we'll just have to wait and see And about you have to that. wonder if they'll think it's tough enough. I mean, yeah. how likely is it that they'll accept the self-imposed penalties? Well, one thing in USC's favor, the people who committed those violations are no longer here. Lou Holtz and his staff, right. uh, an administrator who provided the tutoring for the two players yep. not officially enrolled in school, they're not here. So they may say, okay, um, those folks Since aren't here. Gone, they yeah. committed the um, violations. We'll give you some credit for that one. Gotcha. All right, Rick, thanks so much. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. We're going to take a look at your 10-day forecast right after this. Backroads Barbecue is back. Three spouts, baby. We're putting your favorite out-of-the-way spots to the test in Backroads Barbecue, Friday at 5, 6, and 7. Ken Hudson from Jim Hudson Mitsubishi here, where we finance everybody. We've made a special arrangement with the bank to get you financed in every Mitsubishi for just $86 a month. $86 a month on every Mitsubishi model. This is not a lease, you own it. Remember, we finance everybody. So rush to Jim Hudson Mitsubishi today and get approved. Try Arby's new Market Fresh Cheese Steak Sandwich or Sirloin Steakhouse Wrap. Both are made with Arby's tender sliced sirloin steak. They'll have you saying, I'm thinking Arby's. For your auto insurance needs, see State Farm Agent James Tanner in Dinsville. Chevy's proud to be the number one selling passenger car brand in America. And we have the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. We've always broken the rules. Now we're rewriting them with the Chevy employee discount for everyone. You pay what we pay, not a cent more. We've extended the Chevy employee discount for everyone. Now get employee pricing on almost every 05 Chevy vehicle. See your Carolina Chevy dealer today. For a good Mr. Goodwrench does over a million hours of GM training a year. Gotta keep up with the latest technology. Mind pulling up my horoscope? I feel bad moon rising. Your GM dealer is where you'll find expertise, convenience, and competitive prices. Don't let just anyone work on your vehicle. Trust it only to a GM-trained expert using genuine GM parts. Mr. Goodwrench gets the job done right at the right price. Visit your participating Midlands GM Goodwrench dealer today. Go to Goodwrench.com for the location nearest you. The 12-piece 6 biscuit $8.99 deal at Bojangles. Who says there's nothing good on TV? All right, 90 degrees tomorrow afternoon with scattered thunderstorms likely. We will warm up as we approach the weekend as rain chances go down. And then next week, temperatures come down as rain chances go back up. And something for you to know about, Rick. Yeah, come join us tomorrow at Carabas in uh, Northeast Columbia. I'll be a celebrity server. Craig will be there, too. We're going to auction off this Dave Odom autographed basketball, the Steve Spray autographed football. It all benefits CASA. Fantastic. Great calls. Have a great evening, everybody. That's the news. Good night. Millions of American families rely on...